Hello and welcome. You're watching our special show, Coronavirus uh, Facts versus Myths. This is where we get you all the latest on the pandemic and we also get you the latest uh, vaccine news as well. And uh, coming up ahead on the show, we'll also answer your questions on coronavirus. In fact, our uh, guests will answer those questions for you. So let's now take a look at the big focus on the show. And we're going to look at India's vaccine policy and what went wrong. Remember, the vaccine uh, vaccination drive began on the 16th of January. But till now, we've only managed to vaccinate just around 3% of our population. So look at India's vaccine drive now. Now, since January, India has administered over 20.1 crore COVID vaccine doses uh, so far in a country of 136 crore people. Only a little over 3% are fully vaccinated, that is, with both doses of the vaccine. So if even as we say we've administered 20.1 crore doses, those are not fully vaccinated people. Now, vaccine, vaccine supplies are dwindling and delivery rates are dropping. Uh, the government's earlier stated goal was to vaccinate 30 crore Indians by the end of July, but that cannot possibly be realized at these rates that we've been vaccinating. Remember when the vaccine drive uh, first began, uh, the government had said that they plan to vaccinate uh, frontline healthcare and elderly people, and that amounted to around 30 crore, and they hope to complete that vaccines, uh, the vaccinations uh, by the summer, by July end. Now, so far, until April, we had only two vaccine manufacturers, that's Serum Institute and Bharat Biotech, and both are struggling to keep up with the pace of demand for vaccines. Questions have been raised why India didn't anticipate the number of doses that we would be needing a month ago, placing advance orders and payments to vaccine makers so that they could ramp up their manufacturing capabilities. In fact, the government didn't also support the manufacturers with funds either through grants or as advance payments against future supplies. And, and I'm talking about months ago uh, when we were anticipating we would need a cross of vaccines. The manufacturers had to stockpile at their own risk. There was no national stockpile created. In fact, India was exporting vaccines uh, till March in, uh, in, and more uh, manufacturers could also have been pulled in for vaccine production. Remember, India is uh, called the pharmacy of the world, but uh, now it's only now that vaccine uh, uh, makers, vaccine manufacturers are being approached and uh, sort of deals are, are being attempted to ramp up our vaccination drive. Uh, well, to talk more about uh, India's uh, vaccination drive and also what is the road ahead we're now joined by Dr. Rakesh Mishra, former director, uh, CSIR, CCMB, and advisor to the CCMB. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Mishra, for joining us. And uh, Dr. Uh, Sunila Garg also joins us, a professor of community medicine, MAMSI, member of the Lancet Commission and COVID India Task Force. Thank you both uh, for joining us uh, on the show. Uh, Dr. Rakesh Mishra, now we know what went wrong and how we didn't, you know, either we were very comfortable uh, early this year with the numbers having gone down and we thought we could you know do the vaccination drive at our own pace but we what we didn't anticipate clearly was this second wave and the numbers that went up to you know four lakh in a day of cases being reported but what now what is the way forward you know we have this messy situation in which states are now trying to place global tenders they're not getting anywhere and uh, we're running out of vaccine doses yeah you're right we are in a very uh, uh, difficult uh, situation as far as the pandemic is concerned particularly because of the stress on the healthcare system, because it's the same system that is involved in vaccination as well. And the uh, uh, whole process becomes uh, very, very difficult. And uh, I think that now, since the cases are coming down, I think in coming two, three weeks, we will have a better situation, more in control, particularly uh, less uh, crowd in the hospital, because their mortality is simply not acceptable. It's very unfortunate. But I think uh, uh, if we look at uh, in a little bit, uh, in few weeks time from now, in the next two, three weeks or four weeks, I think our production capacity is, let's say 10 crore and today, it might become 12, 13 crore, which means we can actually vaccinate uh, 30, 40 lakh people a day. So, uh, uh, which, is, which is not that bad, except that the supply has to be ensured and the company has to be supported and there should be proper stock and backing up so that they are able to supply uh, uh, at least on this rate. If we can have a 15 crore or 20 crore monthly production, which might happen after a couple of months, we should be in comfortable situation. But uh, one thing we all have to accept that December, January, we all got little bit relaxed that cases have come down and uh, there was a, uh, some kind of uh, feeling that maybe we are done with this disease. 
and uh, we are on the other side of thing and all of a sudden it came with such a vengeance that none of us could have actually imagined that it will be that bad so uh, right. we are hopefully now other side of the thing gradually but we have to see how we do minimal uh, uh, manage with minimum damage and uh, hopefully i i think in 2 3 weeks we will be in a uh, uh, a much better situation as far as supply and vaccination both are concerned Two three weeks, though it will take a few months to ramp up. Uh, you know uh, the vaccine uh, numbers. Uh, uh, Dr. Sunila Garg, what do you feel that we need to do going forward? Also, another issue if we talk about right now, of course, there's a vaccine shortage, and in cities, you know, people are not being able to, you know, book their vaccines. And uh, but going forward, we also need to address a uh, vaccine hesitancy in rural India because if we're going to uh, vaccinate the adult population by the end of the year, as Dr. Harsh Vardhan has said, uh, this is going to require an extensive outreach by all states and authorities yeah thank you so much one is that when you talked about addressing first of all you know when we talked about shortage there is no doubt that right now you see we are you know having a temporary phase where you know we have gone down but we still have i will say that about you know i was calculating we have got about 156 million doses still with us so with which we can you know kind of go ahead with that but then you know what i would like to say is by the end of december that means from august to december india is going to have approximately 250 crore doses that is one thing which we have to remember and zydus cadilla which is already completed the third phase of the trial will start also producing approximately 5 crore vaccines per month so that will be add on to our ramp up you know capacity of uh, Uh, our uh, serum institute of india and uh, uh, our Bhar bharat biotech vaccine along with sputnik vaccine so and then other vaccines which are in the pipeline are biologicals e and then also nasal vaccine and genova's mrna vaccine which are there which have been calculated in the december doses as no uh, and your important question with regard to rural areas is very relevant here i would like to bring to your attention is that that basically rural area is challenging but not different uh, because you see rural area has got two healthcare workers who are there for thousand population that means anganwadi workers and ashas who are maintaining the record and they are going to mobilize and there only the camps are going to be set up in the health and wellness center or in the sub center where the vaccines are going to be given so there the hesitancy will not be you know so much i see that as we have been able to do lot of uh, you know vaccination in chatisgarh as well because you see where you have you know uh, a close population with close you know network of healthcare workers there the work is comparatively simpler you know so because they will keep a record and we are going to involve village volunteers in that along with panchayats have already been given money to the tune of 8400 crore rupees across the country because they will be playing a critical role in this you know control of strategy of covid-19 in rural areas where you know already vaccination program is quite very strong and also we are using even app over there you know now right. you see so that Right, so we've also allowed walk-in vaccination for those above 18, yes. and each state can, uh, you know, figure out itself how best to apply that, especially in rural areas, to have more people come in. Doctor uh, Sunila, you spoke about, you know, the the other vaccines that we're expecting. Yes, Sputnik, we're expecting it to ramp up. There are a lot of uh, uh, agreements that the Sputnik manufacturers are going into here in India, and more vaccines on, on, on in the horizon. But how will it work now since the center has left the onus on states to procure their own vaccines, and we're seeing this? Uh, I I I feel. some of embarrassing situation of each state trying to uh, approach these global manufacturers and being told that uh, you know we don't deal with states we never de- dealt in that manner and we have to only deal with the country so going forward how will this work uh, will they be approaching uh, these uh, manufacturers by themselves no 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 this is now you see as uh, you see we have already been talking you know primarily no state can fight or no country can fight the pandemic you know in a, in you know differential parts so it is government of india today also you will see in our uh, foreign minister who has gone to talk about the raw products today pfizer has approached to you know government of india that they will supply vaccines not in bits and parts but they will supply to government of india so you know the uh, our window of uh, you know interaction will be government of india what states have to got to do is to have a composite list of or number of vaccines what they are going to require 
to have a dialogue with the center so that in turn there is going to be a single window so that you know we can buy the vaccines together so that is one thing which is there but what i see in long run is that the vaccines from august to december and what uh, you see was earlier told also you know um, right. that uh, you know that we have to you know uh, right now depend upon our you know social vaccine that is masking testing treating tracking and then third is the vaccination part which is there but we have to you know we whatever vaccines we have got what i feel is that people should go ahead and take the vaccines that Absolutely. is important absolutely i just like to get in dr mishra there briefly and uh, your view on this so looking forward uh, going forward as uh, dr sunila was saying we will have access to more vaccines and uh, hopefully the situation will settle somewhat yes yes see the uh, i uh, dr gar already mentioned that we have about 45 crore stock today and we are producing let's say 10 12 crore per month and the more import of the vaccine so that's why i, I was mentioning that in 2 3 weeks probably we will be in much better situation i think right now the the problem is to get out of the current uh, high number of cases and hospital and uh, the general stress that uh, whole uh, uh, i mean people and healthcare system is going through I think it will be uh, improving and now I think we have learned a lesson in a hard way that this pandemic is not going to go away like this and there will be waves after waves if we don't take care of ourselves. And uh, as Dr. Gar mentioned right. that we have to do three things. We have to keep testing, we have to use the social vaccine which is by the way going to be the criteria to decide how we are going to manage this pandemic. Vaccine will be important but uh, social vaccine is going to be much much more important. The mask is even after vaccines and we have to use that so this has to be uh, conveyed uh, uh, vaccine hesitancy now i think now are, are largely been dealt with these vaccines are really good they are even we are lucky maybe we are uh, that they are uh, effective against the new variant which was a big big threat but so far we right. are okay and they are very very safe so i think uh, now hesitancy will go away and we have to get to the business and get as many people as fast. So that is the well, biggest the hesitancy challenge is more in the rural uh, parts of the country. But thank you, doctors, uh, for joining us on, on this topic. And uh, we'll come back to you later in the show for a viewer question segment. Uh, but to talk more about India's challenges going ahead, I'm now joined by Dr. Ramanan Lakshmi Narayan, senior research scholar, Princeton University economist and epidemiologist. Thank you so much uh, for joining us on the show. Your view of India's situation currently, we were just discussing our vaccine challenge and how you know the entire planning uh, seemed to have gone uh, 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 very wrong in a sense we didn't manage to get enough vaccine doses we were relying on two manufacturers uh, we didn't put in enough uh, vaccine uh, orders but uh, going forward now uh, how do you view this situation going forward i think the first thing uh, to fix is really the supply issue uh, the two and a half million doses a day is simply not going to be enough coming out of uh, the two indian manufacturers and I also think that we should be cautiously optimistic about their ability to scale up. Uh, the Bharat Biotech vaccine, uh, the inactivated virus vaccine, is fundamentally a difficult technology to scale up. I think everybody knows this. And it is not like we can go to 5x of this just because we you know, turn on a button tomorrow and that can happen. So that is the nature of the technology itself. The uh, other vaccine made by Serum Institute you know, things are very opaque there. You know, we're hearing about supply shortages, which are blamed on other countries. Uh, there are issues about their own promises to COVAX and other countries. So it is very unclear what their actual commitment is to India and how much they will actually provide to India. And this is what has not yet been, uh, you know, disclosed in any way. So where does that leave us with options? The Sputnik vaccine, you know, certainly if they can scale up, it, there are, uh, it would be helpful but unclear again as to how much that will scale up in a short term. Uh, the, uh, an option that's available to India is really to take the mRNA vaccines. Now, the Pfizer and the Moderna vaccine, they do have uh, cold chain challenges when it comes to India, but I think given the urgency of the situation, we should either try to uh, procure them directly or to try to license the technology because the advantage of that mRNA technology is that it can be scaled up very quickly. It is based on it can be done in a lab. It doesn't require growing a lot of virus and then inactivating them like the Bharat Biotech vaccine does. Now, Bharat Biotech also has other vaccines in the pipeline, and obviously we're hopeful that they will also get approved. But as of now, I, I think that uh, to expect that July, suddenly we will have 
two or three times the amount of vaccine that we have today is uh, is unrealistic unless we have some clear visibility into that. Right. Uh, Moderna, we do know, is expecting to launch its vaccine here only next year. And uh, Pfizer is offering us uh, five crore uh, shots in this year itself. But there's certain, you know, conditions, regulatory relaxations that they want. Uh, but also... Uh, the issue of, uh, you know, immunity erosion is something that is being spoken about. Uh, we, Dr. Harsh Vardhan, our health minister, has said we'll manage to vaccinate the adult population by the end of this year. But by that time, uh, will we have, be in a situation that uh, people, you know, who were vaccinated earlier will once again become vulnerable uh, to COVID? Will we actually ever reach that uh, herd immunity that one talks about? You know, at this point, one simply does not know. That is the only honest answer. We don't have evidence on long-term protection from any of these vaccines, whether the Indian-made ones or the foreign-made ones. It really does not matter. So I think the, the appropriate answer is to say that we have to watch and wait. It is likely that we'll have to revaccinate, but not certain that we'll have to revaccinate. And But at the same time, I think just sitting and thinking that somehow everyone will be vaccinated by December without a clear plan that is obvious to us is also not going to happen. So uh, it's very important that uh, we make up for the lack of planning from, you know, last September, October, uh, and which persists all the way into this year and really, you know, figure out where we're going to get uh, the approximately, I, I would say, 1.4 billion doses that we're going to need to vaccinate a substantial proportion of the population, uh, you know, before the end of this year. Right. The other worry is, as, as I was discussing with the doctors earlier, and if we talk about the spread of COVID in India, is rural India. We, we're not even very sure of, you know, the extent. There's not enough testing. Uh, there, there are a lot of cases of COVID that are being uh, uh, diagnosed as typhoid. Uh, there are talks in some villages of mysterious illnesses and mysterious fevers emerging. So we do know that that is COVID that has spread there. And uh, so we, we're not really getting a clear picture uh, from rural India. You know, that is true. And we always knew this was going to be the case because our health systems are weak. We have not made these investments over decades. And uh, it was unrealistic to think that we could have built that system, you know, overnight or even the space of one year. So there is a lot of devastation that we're hearing of, uh, you know, from uh, people working on the ground in rural India. Uh, there is a need to put out a clear picture because the best way to get people to protect themselves is to give them the case load and the mortality load because then they would protect themselves. Today, if you go into many villages, people don't realize there is COVID and therefore they don't mask. Now, that is a real tragedy. All right. In fact, we're seeing uh, visuals of, you know, how health teams have gone to rural India. They're being attacked. People even jumping into the river uh, to avoid vaccinations. I, another fear that has emerged, especially in parts of UP that we're hearing, is because of, you know, the bodies and a lot of talk of the bodies in the Ganga, etc., that there's a certain fear now attached to the vaccinations as well. And uh, some sort of, you know, uh, rumors about uh, how vaccines and the number of deaths. And uh, this is, again, something that's going to be a big challenge, this vaccine hesitancy in rural parts of the country. You know, vaccine hesitancy is a challenge in every part of the country, in urban and rural India. It's a challenge we will have to take on. I, I feel that we can, we can, that is one challenge we can actually take on. And we have experience with it in the context of polio where there was vaccine hesitancy. Uh, I just feel that if we can fix the supply issue right now, we can certainly make a big push to get, you know, hundreds of millions of people vaccinated in a short period of time. The delivery mechanisms exist in India, we are capable of doing large events at very, you know, uh, things like elections, which involve a lot of people. I have more confidence there. I have less confidence in the supplier this time. All right. So the concern remains the supply. And that's something we really need to get in order now, uh, given uh, that, uh, you know, uh, most states are reporting shortages of vaccines and and even floating global tenders to get vaccine supplies. Uh, thank you so much uh, for joining us uh, on the program, uh, Dr. Ramanan. Thank you for speaking to us. Thanks for having me. Well, with that time for us to slip into a short break, on the other side, we'll take our viewer question segment and doctors will answer those questions for you. So do stay tuned. Welcome back. Well, it's time now for our viewer question segment and uh, uh, joining us are the doctors uh, to answer those questions. Uh, Question. Thank you so much, Dr. Mishra and Dr. Sunil Agarg, for staying on. Uh, we have a caller, Parvez, uh, calling in uh, from a Sam. Go ahead with your question, Parvez. Yeah, my question is, um, currently I'm uh, undertaking the, the anti-rabies uh, 
vaccine. Um, what I wanted to know is if, if I should wait uh, before I get my COVID vaccine or there is no such thing as such. Dr. Sunila? I couldn't get his question. He, he's he's taking the rabies vaccine right now. So he wants to know, should he wait now or keep a gap before he gets uh, the COVID vaccine? I think this question he asked on a different channel yesterday or somebody else also. I also said that he can oh. go ahead with this vaccine also. So there is no problem. And normally it will happen that one day he'll go for the rabies vaccine and next day he'll go for the you know, uh, COVID-19 vaccine. So it's okay. He, there's no problem. We already give two to three viral vaccines together. Also, if we look at our national immunization program. So please don't worry. You can go ahead with the vaccination. All right. We have another uh, caller, Kokila Singh uh, from Jodhpur. Go ahead with your question. Um, yeah. Hi. I actually wanted to um, ask uh, doctors because I am I have had dogs since I was a child. And I, I find I've also been, I'm also a COVID survivor and COVID recovery. Now I got uh, SARS-CoV-2 on the 2nd of April. I found um, going through this whole uh, rigmarole of uh, being affected by the virus and in recovery now, I found there to be a lot of similarity between uh, paro virus uh, in, and, uh, and COVID because the way that it affects the gastrointestinal um, you know, um, the well-being of a dog, the similarly, I think that this virus, the way it attacks you in the initial 48 to 72 hours is um, very similar to how it takes the life of most dogs. So I think in the rural areas, uh, this one factor, this major, you know, this major symptom of diarrhea is being taken very lightly. Okay. So I wanted to ask, Right. I wanted to ask that what is, you know, how do you feel that this should be taken? Because in rural areas, when I'm in Jodhpur, Rajasthan, people are taking this, uh, you know, this diarrhea aspect of the symptom of this disease very lightly. All right. Uh, Dr. Mishra, your, what would your response be to that? I mean, uh, I'm not expert, but I can tell that uh, diarrhea symptom is not taken lightly. This is one of the... Yeah. Uh, well-known symptoms of this, at least in this uh, uh, wave, we have uh, recognized that. And uh, uh, remember, this is a, a hardly one and a half year old disease and lots of things uh, and its effect and long COVID, those effects are still being uh, learned actually. So, but we have made tremendous progress and uh, even there is a vaccine available which is just unthinkable, unheard of, but now we have that. Right. So, uh, our listener is right that lots of things need to be understood about this. Many clinical features need to be understood about this disease. Right, Dr. Sunil, very briefly, uh, diarrhea is one of the major symptoms yeah. this time around. You're hearing a lot more yeah. in the second wave, isn't it? No, we heard it in the first, this thing also, and, uh, you know, primarily, but this time, since the number of cases are too much. But uh, I'll I also see. say that not only this, we have also found now, you know, the, you know, contamination of sewage also. That is another thing. So ICMR has also set up the, you know, sites for regularly surveillance uh, of the sewage samples so that we can identify the hotspots. Now, why the sewage will be contaminated is only through fecal contamination. So these diseases are not taken lightly. In June 2020 also, we had a study published where you see we examined the, you know, stool samples and it was found that, you know, uh, through you know RTP uh, through this uh, polymerase chain, PCR testing only, and what we found that you know virus was found a week before to two weeks later. Right. So that is where it is the importance is already being given. So, but definitely for very very important and nice of you to raise this question because through this medium we can continuously make people aware of right. the situation. Right. Uh, we have one more caller, uh, Amar, uh, calling from Pune. Go ahead. I, I, I have to bring it to your attention regarding the statement from ICMR uh, Secretary Director General Mr. Balaram Bhargav. Yes, go ahead. All right, we seem to have lost that line. Well, we're completely out of time. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Sunila and Dr. Mishra, for joining us and you know staying on and answering those questions. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Well, that's all the time we have on the show today. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.